Welcome back. In the last video, we learned how the decision tree classifier works, how, how it works. In this video, we, we're going to have an example so things become much clearer. Remember that the decision tree classifier is a frequency table-based classifier. And the way it works is uh, using one predictor at a time, we try to build a tree and split uh, according to a certain criteria. And the criteria is that we want the variable or the attribute that gives us the highest information gain. We mentioned the use of the entropy, how to calculate it, and if things are evenly divided, then entropy is 1, that's maximized. If things are all homogeneous, i.e. all the uh, uh, values here are of the same class, then entropy is going to be uh, zero. We mentioned also that we need to compute two types of entropy, the entropy before splitting and entropy after splitting. So entropy before splitting is for our target. And we used our uh, weather data as an example. We mentioned here that our target now is to play golf. So we build a frequency table for the values of the class, either yes or no. We have nine yeses and five noes. And then we can compute the entropy of the of those. My, uh, the summation of minus pi log to base 2 pi we mentioned that we have the minus there because we have log to base 2 now over the probability and probability is between 0 and 1 log to base 2 over value between 0 and 1 is always negative now probability of for example yes is 9 over 14 9 over the whole number and the probability of no is 5 over 14 we just plug those in as you can see here nice and easy and the result will be 0 0.94 and then we spoke about uh, the other type of entropy that we need to compute which is entropy after splitting so here if we split using outlook then we need to compute the entropy for the probability of each value of the outlook times the entropy of the different values according to the class for the outlook we mentioned that we need to use the probabilities now for the rows because we, we're concerned about the rows not the columns from if you remember from the naive base classifier now we are concerned about the rows because we want to split according to the values of these categories sunny uh, we have three yeses two no's so probability here is three over five here two over five the sum of this row overcast four over four and zero over four rainy two over five and three over five now what we do here is we compute the entropy for all of these uh, 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 categories of, of the variable outlook so entropy of play golf and outlook is probability of sunny times entropy of 3 and 2 probability of sunny is 5 over 14 entropy of 3 and 2 we computed the same way as we mentioned here exactly the same the same way we just plug the values of the probabilities in, in the summation for both yes and no for, so for sunny 3 over 5 and 2 over 5 for outlook probability is 4 over 5 and the value for probabilities are 1 and 0 because 0 over 4 is 0 and for rainy probability is 5 over 14 and the for the for the uh, for the classes yes and no we have two and three so probability here is two over five and here is three over five we just plug the values as we mentioned before and we get the entropy now what we do is as we mentioned before we compute the difference between the two entropies and that's called and the information gain and we want the attribute that gives us the highest information gain i.e. here we do this for all other attributes and which was the one that gives us the highest information gain so let's take an example we calculate the entropy of the target we're using our weather data set here we've calculated this before for the target play golf entropy was 0.94 after that data set is split on the different attributes the entropy of for each uh, for each branch is calculated then it's added proportionally to get total entropy for the split now the resulting entropy is subtracted from the entropy before the split the result is the information gain or the decrease in entropy so we want this information gain or the how much does the entropy decrease and we you we choose the variable that gives us the highest decrease in entropy i.e the highest information gain now for our weather, for our weather data set we build our frequency tables and remember the probability is now uh, for the rows not the columns because we want to split according to the values of, of, of these rows for different uh, attributes or for different uh, uh, predictors and then we compute the entropy as we explained before now if we do it for the four variables now for the four variables 
we find that the in the variable that gives us the highest information gain is as you can see outlook so we split according to outlook we have three branches sunny overcast and rainy i'll leave it to you to work this out to plug the values in although i've actually explained them in the last video and briefly i've gone over them uh, 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 a couple of minutes ago now you notice now that the attribute that gives us the largest information gain is the outlook so we choose that we split according to that so we have three branches now sunny overcast and rainy now for overcast we only have yeses if you go back to the data set you can notice even that for when the outlook is overcast we only have yeses there's no uh, uh, no for overcast equals yes and therefore the entropy there will be zero so we don't branch any further when outlook is overcast but for the other two branches for the sunny and rainy we need to split further because the entropy is not zero so here we repeat the same thing we did before uh, we uh, split according to either now temperature humidity or windy and we choose the one that gives us the highest information gain as we did in the last uh, couple of steps and we end up with our decision tree like that that's our root node and these are our leaf these are our leaf nodes now the id3 algorithm is run recursively so this the same process is repeated until we uh, are satisfied until we are we end up with all uh, 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 leaf nodes where the entropy is zero now this seems to be too much but this is the basic idea of the uh, this injury I, by by too much i mean that uh, so if if our data is too big or how we have too many variables then that becomes uh, uh, too much for our classifier we'll come to maybe we can exp later in one of the coming videos we can explain a way of how to deal with this the id3 algorithm is run recursively on the non-leaf branches until all data is classified so we mentioned that we just recursively run the same idea by calculating the entropy before and after the split and choosing the variable that gives us the highest information gain one more thing i wanted to mention here is that for a decision tree it can be easily transformed into a set of rules by mapping from the root node to the leaf nodes one by one so for example here we have outlook sunny windy we, what we can do is that rule one if outlook is sunny and so this is a logical and and windy is false then always play is yes if outlook is sunny and windy is true then play always no yes so these are just transforming this into a set of decision rules if outlook is overcast then always play play always is yes if outlook is rainy and humidity is high then play is no outlook is rainy humidity is normal then play is yes as you can see one thing that i'd like to mention here is that if our data contains numerical variables then we can use binning to transform them into uh, uh, categorical variables and develop our decision tree in order for you to un if you don't know how to convert a, a numerical to categorical or categorical to numerical variables then please watch my uh, data exploration and analysis tutorial in there I explain various techniques of how to do this I'm going to stop here thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video